God. And I pray today as we go into the word of God that God would begin to speak to lives. I've prayed about it. I've fasted. I've waited on God. And I know God has something for you today. Amen. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me into the book of First Kings chapter 17. And it's a long story, but I'll cut some short because of the time. Okay, you tell me, take my time. <laughs> okay, when you find it, could you say amen? And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, shall be not dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself in the brook Sherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, that I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he did went, and according to the word of the Lord, so dwell by the brook Sherith. That is before Jordan. And the ravens bought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass for a while that the brook dried up, because there was no rain. And the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate, he met a widow woman gathering sticks. And he called her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water and a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little cruise of oil. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in, dress it, me and my son, we may eat and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said. And he and she, but make thee therefore a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after for thee and thy son. And when, the, when she had said this, the Lord of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail unto the day the Lord sends rain. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And when she came into the house and did eat many days, and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil. And I'll stop there because I'll continue the story and you will get, you can go home and read the story. But it's such an amazing uh, story that you want to read this story. Now, I know that you're dealing with refresh. And so I sub team this conference, Seasons of Refreshing. But I am sure you have heard the word meals on wheels. Have you ever heard that? Well, today I'm going to talk about meals on wings. Amen? My question is to you today, how do you survive tough times? Now, every one of us can say that we struggle with something sometime or the other. Now, tough times is inescapable. We all go through this. Now, if you haven't been through the tough times, I am sure it's coming. And if you think that being a Christian would exempt you 
from having a tough life, well, let me remind you, it's going to be tough. Because the Christian walk is a walk of deliverance, of healing, of blessings, but it's also a walk of trials and tribulations. So today I'm going to share three points with you. Our text give us an account of Elijah and the widow of Zarephath. This chapter has many insights into how God uses unlikely people to bless and different sources to accomplish his purpose in our lives. But the first thing I noticed about, the first thing that I'm going to talk to you today about, Elijah's faith and confidence in God. And I want to tell you this morning that God is going to refresh your faith and your confidence in him. Now, this was done through obedience, and all he had was nothing but a command from God. The second point I'm going to talk to you today about is the woman of Zarephath, the widow, and her testimony. God is going to refresh your testimony today. It's not going to be the same. You will have a different testimony. I want to show you how a single mother... We need to consider her situation, but she was hospitable. And the third point I'm going to talk to you about the joy that she received in her home. God is going to refresh the joy in your home. He's going to bring gladness where there is sadness. Where there is unhappiness, he's going to bring happiness. Because God is going to get ready to do something great in your life. Amen. Now the joy that God is going to give you, no man can give you. Only God can bless you. Okay, my first point is, Elijah, he had faith and confidence in God. Now God wonderfully suits men for the task that he has called them to. And if anyone was capable for this task, it was Elijah. Elijah, King, King Ahab, did evil in the sight of God. And if you think he was bad, he had a wife. Now, some women can be really bad. Well, Jezebel was the queen of evil. She was worse than her husband. But we will see where God, when he is in control, what he can do. She was killing the prophets of God. But yet, look what God had did. He, he, she, Elijah was hit, hiding right in her backyard. And she could not see him. You know, when the devil thinks that he has your corner, God has you covered. He will hide you. You don't. If it's behind the bushes, he will hide you from the enemy. He wants to hide his children who is doing good for him. Amen. Now, people don't like you to talk about their sins. You know, when you point out the sins in people's lives, they want to hate you. They want to kill you. And this is what Ahab and his wife was doing because they were revealing the sins that they were doing. But if God be for you, who can be against you? So God told Elijah to flee. Now when God tells you to run, you better run. Okay? When he gives you a command, he will give you direction. And Elijah did just what the Lord had said. He had no questions, no arguments, no complaints, no expectations. All he did was simply follow God's obedience. Now, when we are children of God and we follow God through obedience, there is never trouble in his word. We will get some trouble along the way, but when God is directing you, hey, just follow him. God said, I want you to hide yourself in the brook, for I have commanded the ravens to feed you. 
Now Elisha was obedient to God. Following the Lord through obedience is the outcome of our spiritual life. When you follow in God, obedience as a child of God is the outcome. Imagine the prophet, a man of God, with a plan from God, who knew God had to endure much pain and suffering. But yet he obeyed God because he knew that if he obeyed God, that God was going to work out the details for him. When you're following God and God is leading you, he will work out the details for you. You don't have to worry. Now, the will of God will never lead any one of us where he cannot care for us. We cannot claim to say that we love God and we don't serve him and his word. But God, let's look at the providence in, God, in Elijah's life. How God cares for Elijah. Actually, I had to take two sermons and put them together. And God said to Elijah, I have commanded. Please excuse me, my voice is kind of going. I have commanded the ravens to feed you. Now he had his meals all planned out. You see how God does stuff? He doesn't do a halfway job. He does a job well done. He planned his meal out. He planned meal in the evening. He, he wasn't hungry. He wasn't going to get his servant starve and weak. He made him sure that he was taken care of. Now, when God tells you to do something, he just don't throw you out there. <laughs> he will lead you, he will feed you, and he will keep you. So listen, every day, he got fresh food. Imagine him getting fresh food every day in a brook. Listen, he didn't have bottled water. He had fresh running water Amen. from the brook. Amen. He was being fed in a good way. He had meat. Those ravens probably went in the king's table and took all their good food and bring it down to the valley. Now let's look at the medium God used for his servant. Now, ravens, he used. Let's, ravens is not the cutest birds. <laughs> now, ravens are a very wise bird. They can mimic humans. And I listened to the video where they're actually mimicking humans. At the same time, they're mainly known as scavengers or roadkill. <laughs> if they eat anything, it is rotten. It's nothing fresh. They can make your stomach turn. They were definitely kosher, and they were off the Jewish limit. They are called takers and not givers. Some of us don't only take, but let us give to. I'm sure you heard the term ravenous. Now, a ravenous person is someone who would eat and eat and eat and vomit. That's the nature of a ravenous person. They never give. Let us not be ravenous where we just eat the word of God, listen to the word of God, and we never give out anything. We want to give the word of God out there. Now, God could have called a robin. He could have called a dove. He could have called... A uh, goose or whatever animal, a rabbit or whatever. But he chose to use a raven, a greedy bird. <laughs> with meals on wings to refresh his servant. Now this must have been a frightening sight for Elijah. Seeing a flock of ravens coming with food. But God had it all planned where his servant will be comfortable with food. He didn't have to worry for a week's supply or a month's supply. He got supplied daily. God is going to meet your needs daily. You don't have to worry about one week or a month or two months. It is coming. 
The mercies of God will keep you. And he will bless you. Just like he blessed the children of Israel with manna from in heaven. Daily, daily they got blessing. Why? Don't you think he can bless his children? Yes, he can bless his children. He will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And they will hide you and they can't touch you. Now, some of you, we worry about deadlines, financial struggles, house demands. We spend sleepless nights thinking about how we're going to face all this tomorrow's pressure. We drown ourselves. But I want you to know when God wants to bless you, no matter what the source is or what the weather is or who the bird is or how greedy he is, God has your blessings marked out and he has your name on it and he is going to bless you regardless of what man say or what boy say or whatever woman say, God has your name on it. Your name is written Say your name this morning because God has your name written yes. for a blessing. It's marked out. And no man, listen to me, no man can steal your blessing. Yes. Not even the devil he'll try, but God will make a way where he will bless you. Yes. The point is, the raven was just the delivery system. But God was the true source of all of this. God is your source this morning. Out of the mouth of a filthy bird, God sent morsel to sustain and satisfy the hunger of a servant. God will do great things and use great things to bless you this morning. In times of drought and want, what am I talking about? God may provide differently than we expect. We might Expect something wonderful, marvelous. It might not be in a plate with a platter, but God will meet your need this morning. Your employer might be able to give you a paycheck, but God is your provider. He is your supplier. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. I want you to know that you will survive the tough time. Hard times may have held you down, and they will come and they will go, but it happens to the best of us. But when we have God in our side, we will manage and we will sur survive the hard times. Look at what happened. After he was fed, suddenly the brook dried up. No rain. All the natural resources dried up. Now things were going well for a season. And maybe some of you can say that too. You have nourished physically. You've been sitting by a brook that has been dried up. No income. No help anymore. You end up worn, disappointed, and thirsty. Thirsty. But I am here to tell you this morning, God is about to change your season. And your season is going to be a fruitful season. That dry brook, I want to say to you today, is going to run again. You're not going to be thirsty. Because when God steps into your life, things will be different. Only God can do that. Only God can take, make things right. And then God said to Elijah, I want you to arise. Oh, you might be down for a moment. You might be on your face for a while. But there is a time when God will say, my child, arise. It's time to raise up. It's time to come up. It is okay to sit down for a while, but we have to move on. Yeah. We can't stay in that stage. Yeah. We have to get out for the same God who was in the valley. is the same God who is with you, and he can make things right today. He can bless you today. 
If God cares for the birds of the air, those little fast flighty fellows, we have to look and learn how they are so industrious, yet carefree, and God cares providing for us is greater than theirs. Amen. So I want you to see how God gives me and you the ability to grow crops, to raise animals. We can do more. We are more capable than those little fellows. We can do more for God than those little guys. Then the second point is, God said to him, I want you to go to Zarephath. Now, Zarephath is a place of testing. Look at where he came from. Every time he seems to get comfortable, he had to move on. Maybe in your spiritual life, you feel the same way. Every time you get a blessing, you have to be fighting for it. You feel like you're going down. Every time you try to come up, you're going down. But the Christian walk and the Christian life is a life of testing, trials. We have to go through. The journey does not end here. We must be tried again and again. It might take a long time for some of us. It might take a week for some of us. It might take a day for some of us. But we have to be keep going and pressing on to the unchanging hands of God. Because only God alone can fix our problem. Now changing my location does not mean it's going to change my situation. But God will change you in your situation. God wants to change us. God uses various testing and hardships in order to refine us like gold in the fire. He wants to purge us. He wants to refine us into his likeness and into his image. He wants to refresh us as children of God. Your trials that you're going through is just designed just for you. It might not be for me. What is happening to me might not be happening to you. What is happening to sister might not be happening to me. God designed it in different ways. So what is your hap happening to you might not be happening to me. But we just have to trust God and praise him for what is going through in our life. James 1, 2, and 4 says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life. Blessed is the man or woman of God who when they are tried, they know who their anchor is. God told Elijah, I want you to meet a widow. I'm sure there were lots of widows in that town. Now, in Zarephath, so, so many, God sends us sometimes to the worst situation it, before he can prove who he really is. He wants to prove us. And he sends us into some situations sometimes that we cannot see beyond our eyes. But he will meet us at the point of our need. God said to Elijah, I want you to meet this widow. Now this is the story of the case of an empty barrel. He's going to meet a woman with an empty barrel. God told Elijah that I want you to see this woman and ask her for a meal. Now, think about this request. You might think it's so unreasonable. He's going to a woman who is ready to die. She and her son, they're going to eat the last meal. They're about to give up, and now God is sending him to this woman. Now, if Elijah was looking for encouragement from a human standpoint, there would be no encouragement. He would be looking for a woman that is well-dressed, very fancy, with a luxury car, with a beautiful house, and with, with a full pantry. But this lady had an empty pantry. She had nothing in it. She was gathering sticks, a sign of poverty. She couldn't even light her own fire. Many of you who come from the islands know 
that when you had a fireside, that you had to light it to cook food. You could not afford the luxury of a stove. You had to cook by the fireside. You had to light it in order to get a meal. This was such a poor woman. And then God is sending him to this woman. Sometimes the people we're looking for is not the rich people. It's the poor little ones who are struggling. In this story, this is the case. She was a struggling mother. She was a struggling woman. She could not even afford. Whenever a widow was marked out by the tongue, they don't want widows in their tongue. Normally, the, the widows would go to their father, father's house and uh, beg bread there. Or many of them turn into prostitution. But this woman, she stuck with her son. And so many of you who are single and are going through a rough time this morning, I need you to know that there is someone who really cares about you, someone who is going to touch your life and bless you because he sees your heart and he knows your need this morning because you are not uh, just an ordinary little single mother. You are a child of God. You are love of God. You are blessed by God. And he's going to make a way for you. Even if you're broke and dumb, God is still, good. you still got to light your own fire. Now when you take the little fire that you have, and you put it in the hands of God. God can take that and bless that fire and ignite it and make you a beacon of light. God will bless you. You will survive the tough time. I want you to know that. Those two little sticks that you put, you've been trying to keep to light your fire. But when you leave it in the hands of God, what you're trying to do, God can do much more for you. A single mother facing economic pressures. She had already given up on life. It was her last meal. Her husband probably died of famine. Some of us has been facing pressures. Husband gone. Income gone. Children gone. Job gone. We're living on our last meal. You're a single mother with no resources, no financial support, no food, no hope. Because of starvation, living at the end of nothing, you have been faced with nothing. How many of us today can say that we have been faced with nothing? I want you to know this is where the grace and the mercy of God found us. Physically in poverty and spiritually, we were in a death bed. We were in a, a fix, but God, but God stepped into our life. You see, as human, as long as we have our resources, we get comfortable and we sometimes forget to rely on God's grace and goodness and his provision. But the thing is, she was hospitable. Knowing that she had to divide her bread, she was having her own problems. She was willing to share her meager supply with the man of God. How many of us are going through the same problem? We feel that we have been stretched and stretched. We don't even have enough for ourselves. And then we have to help someone along the way. What are you willing to give this morning? God asked Moses, what do you have? All Moses had was a rod. All the little boy had was fish and a few loaves of bread. Samson, all he had was a jawbone. Because of this lady giving, she was able to survive the tough times. We should never measure God's supply but what, by what we can see. Because God is not limited this morning. He can do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we ask or think. Our Jehovah God will provide. With him, there is no lack. 
Elijah did not measure the size of the request by the widow's position, but by her obedience, and she was blessed beyond expectations. Her son died. Disaster struck again. It doesn't end. As long as you're on this Christian road, there will be many trials that you have to face. It's not a bed of roses. It's not an easy life. But it is a fruitful reward in life after all. And then she blamed the man of God. You know, sometimes when we are going through the rough, we blame other people. We say, it's a cause of this one or the other. But we should not blame others. She held on to her son. And Elijah took him from her bosom. And he laid him on the bed. And he cried out to the Lord in prayer. You see, folks, we ladies like to hold on to things, especially our children. There might be some things you're holding close to your bosom, and you do not want to let it go. But God is saying, let it go this morning. Let it go. It may be a wayward husband. It may be a lost friendship. It may be a, something that died. But only God alone can revive your miracle this morning. You are believing God for a miracle. Just hang in there. Hope and believe him for the miracle. And she received her miracle in prayer. This is the first miracle in the Old Testament. The raising of the dead. For her, this was the best gift that any mother could receive. Her son coming back to life. Her poor meal that she gave. She and her son were able to eat for years to come. All because she was obedient to God. You see, in famine and in lack, she received more than she could ever own or work for. God gave her special favor. She had daily supply. He knows your needs this morning. He is your provider. He will provide wisdom as you need it. He will provide comfort as you need it. Oh, you might be going through struggles. You might be crying all by yourself. But he will provide comfort to you today. He will provide grace to sustain you in the time of your need. God wants to provide for your everyday life. Our needs may increase. But God's supernatural supply will appear in stunning ways. Christ's moment might bring divine encounter when you are limited and constrained by natural resources. Sometimes we just need to go through the test. It's just a test. Test of our faith. God wants to refresh our faith today, but we must be tested. With a drying brook, Elijah was tested. A dwindling barrel and a depleting bottle of oil. A dying boy. The widow, she was tested by giving her meager bread and an empty bottle of oil and a dying son. But God never failed her. And he didn't fail her. What have you been tested with this morning? By her act of kindness, she was able to receive for a lifetime that she lived there. It was over two years and more, but she was sick. It is time for us as children of God to take the lid off of lack, of unbelief, and time for us to put our faith and our trust and our confidence in the God who cares for us today. If you feel that you have been running on empty, the brook has been dried up, you are not a barrel case this morning. You might have an empty barrel, but you are not a barrel case. Psalms 4, 6, and 8 says, God wants to put gladness in our hearts. He wants to increase our corn and wine. He wants to make us bountiful and happy and blessed. You will survive the tough times. 
Because God delights in the prosperity of his children. He will cause streams to run in the desert. You might say, oh, it's just a little trickle. But the mercy drops are falling upon your life. You might not get this big rush of abundance. But the little things that God is blessing you with, you will be able to say, thank you, Lord. He will make the dry deserts water again for you. Because he is the source of our life. Even if there is meals on wheels, there is still meals on wings for us. God is in charge of my everyday life and yours. The brook was just a preparation for the blessings to come. In turbulent times, he is God. He's the God of yesterday, today, and forever. He did it for you today. What made you think he can't do it for you tomorrow? He'll do it. The barrel and the oil was not empty anymore. When God does it, how he does it, whenever he does it, but he will do it again. He will do it again for you this morning. I want you to lift your faith and rise up high in God. Because God is not a tiny God. He's not a God that you put in the back seat. He's a God that is able to care for you. Let me share in conclusion a story of George Mueller. George Mueller was not only a different man or unique, but he was a remarkable man of faith in God. He supported over a thousand orphans exclusively on prey. He supported missions and schools. Mueller never asked for any contributions. He never took a loan. Mueller trusted God and prayed for miraculous provision and God heard his prayer. One breakfast morning while he was praying, there was no food in the pantry, and the kids were waiting there. He called his staff, and he confidently asked them to bow his head and pray with him. As soon as they began praying, there was a knock on the door. It was the baker. The baker said the night before God had woken him up and told him, that the orphans had no bread, and he was baking bread all night for them. As soon as he delivered the bread, there was another knock on the door. It was the milkman. His wagon had broken down. And in order for him to fix the wagon, he had to empty the milk out. And so he, he gave the orphans bread. That morning, because Mueller prayed, there was bread, and there was milk, and there was food in the pantry for the students. I want you to know that our Jehovah God this morning, he is our dear provider. He will always meet our needs at the point and time. He is willing to share with you his life and his all. Just as he blessed Elijah and the woman of Zarephath, he will bless you today. Remember the Lord God watches over you. He will cause you to survive these tough times. Trust him and give him a chance in your life. God will refresh everything that you're asking for. Your empty barrel he's going to bless. Your season is coming. Oh, trust God. Don't give up. That season that you're about to give into, God wants to bless you in your season. You might be think that saying to yourself, oh, it's so hard. I can't make it. But just one push again, one more, and God will uh, help you. Your meals might not come on wheels or wings, but God will bless you with somebody. He will provide for you. It might not be a lavish way, but in a small way it will come. It will come and meet you at the point of your need this morning. God wants to touch your life. Ladies, we know how to bow our knees and pray. When the men go to work, and sometimes we have to work, 
but we feel the pinch in the home. We can drop our knees on the floor and begin to cry and worship and ask God for our miracle. That is where we meet with God and he blesses his children. He will provide for you this morning. He's a good God. He's a provider. He will bring it to you some way or the other. There is no lack with God this morning. There is no lack with our father this morning. He is willing to share with us. So I ask you this morning to trust our almighty God. To put your faith in him. Just as how Elijah trusted God. And this woman trusted God with everything that she had. Don't you think it was, it, what was hard for her to take her meal and give it to Elijah knowing that she was going to die. She was already prepared to die, she and her son. But look what God did for her. He blessed her beyond her, her expectation. God is going to bless you beyond your expectation this morning. He's going to meet your needs. I pray today that the blessings of the Lord will fall. That your faith will arise. That God will refresh you. Single mothers don't give up. Look what God did for the single woman. She didn't have to go into her father's house. She didn't have to beg bread. She was lighting her own fire. She was making her own meal. And God blessed her. I pray this morning that the word of God would begin to speak to your heart. And that you would be refreshed by the presence of our God. Our almighty God is here this morning. If you feel he is here this morning. And you want God to bless you. And you want your faith to rise up. Please come to the altar. Please come and make a decision. Please come if you are living on the very last end. There is no luck with God. God will bless you today. I ask that you would come. Make your way to this altar as I turn back to our sister Judy. And God will bless you. God bless you and thank you for this opportunity.